One of the biggest debates in carp fishing is whether you should fish with tight lines or slack lines. Now there are pros and cons to both, so in this video we're going to remove all the mystery and focus on the simple facts. So let's start with tight lines. There's one major drawback of fishing with your line, bowstring tight down to your lead, and that is that carp in almost all circumstances don't like it when they touch a tight line. I've fished for carp that have never been fished for out in America where they shouldn't be scared of a piece of fishing line. They've never seen it before. They've never felt it against their scales or fins before. And I've watched them swim in, touch the line, ah, spook off and not come back for quite a long time. Like It shows that a tight line is definitely scary to a carp for whatever reason. You can start to avoid the fish touching your line by putting on a back lead and holding it down against the bottom and that can definitely help but i'd say the main advantage of using a tight line is bite indication it's the fact that with a tight piece of line you're gonna know when a carp has taken your bait and moved off with it a few really good anglers that i've spoken to over the years have actually used tight lines to their advantage to try and locate carp. So in the winter, sometimes it can be very hard to work out where the fish actually are. They're not jumping, they're not bubbling, they're not cruising on the surface. And therefore, one of the ways that you can locate them is spread your rods out, fish quite tight lines, and actually wait to see twitches on your bobbins. When that bobbin is like twitching up, twitching back down, it could be that carp are brushing the line, so you've actually managed to drop your rig nearby to them. When you do this, you cast out and uh, you might get a line bite, bring your rig back towards you. You might keep getting line bites, bring the rig back towards you even more until the line bites sort of start to stop. Then you're probably fishing in the middle of the shoal because carp shoal up really tightly in winter. That is a definite advantage of tight lines. Now fishing for carp with slack lines also has drawbacks. The main one is, is that a fish can move a little way before you get an indication on your bobbin or your alarm. Slack lines are definitely to be avoided if you're fishing up to lily pads, beds of weed, or close to snags, because the more slack line there is, the more that carp can move before you know anything about it. And you can have lost fish, they can get into the snags, they can come off, don't be fishing slack lines uh, when you're close to, 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 to danger. They do have a, an advantage though, because a slack line is, is able to lay down across the bottom and the slacker you make it, the less chance there is of those carp when they're swimming around your, your swim, uh, touching the line, bumping into it and getting spooked. So if you're fishing for really wary carp right close in the margins, a slack line is probably your best bet. So when fishing close to the shore, I'm almost always fishing a slack line, sometimes even laying the rod down on the ground. And if I've got a bobbin, I can just lay that against the floor and pay off plenty of slack. Then when you start fishing further out into the middle of the lake, that carp could take the bait and swim in any direction. It could come towards you, which means your bobbin will fall towards the ground. It could also swim away from you, pulling the bobbin up. You'll need a little bit of tension in your line to hold the bobbin up off of the ground to make sure that you can see both types of bite. In the situations where I find myself casting tight to snags or up against an island, that is where a tight line comes into play. You need to know if that fish has picked up your bait and you need to be on the rod quickly. For your alarm to let out a beep, the bobbin either needs to pull up or fall back down. So what sometimes you see is people fishing with a light bobbin with a dead tight line up against some snags. The fish takes the bait, tries to swim away from you, the clutch is done up tight, and the bobbin has nowhere to go. It's already at the top, so it can't pull any higher. This can mean that you don't really get much of a beep out of your alarm. So for this, when you're fishing to snags with tight lines, I find it beneficial to use a heavier bobbin with a little bit of a drop. This heavy bobbin allows you to hold that tension in the line, keep it nice and tight, but also means that if the fish comes towards you, that weight is going to pull down and let out a beep on the alarm. But at the same time, it gives you that little drop, maybe just an inch or so, for the line to pull up when a fish runs away from you. I think 
in general, you're gonna have to just find what works for you on the bank, leaning towards tighter lines when fishing close to danger and leaning towards slacker lines when you're close in and away from any, any snags or debris. I hope this video has helped you guys and if you want to know what to do once you've hooked that carp to give yourself the best chance of landing it, check out the video on screen now for a guide in how to land as many carp as possible.